Hello and welcome to another episode of Kingdom Hearts 3. Or the same one if I cut these together, who knows. Uh, I've actually beaten the game now. This is me going back and uh, editing this in because, well, it unlocked after the game finished, but I honestly feel like a Let's Play should end with the end of the game. So, here we go, Battle Gates. It's just more of those things that I showed off earlier. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna end up finishing all the Remy crap. So I'll be a couple of Keyblades short at the end of my Let's Play, but it's not the end of the world. I'll still have gotten the experience of the game itself, just without a couple of collectibles. I got the final cutscenes and stuff, so I'm not really worried about that. I'll probably get those in my off time if I feel like it, before the DLC, which I'm also going to be Let's Playing. So that'll be fun. Yeah, definitely has a heart of steel. I really, really choked up when she got out of that realm of darkness. Like, just watching that footage back. <laughs> Hashtag decade in the dark. Jeez, Sora, be a little bit more sensitive. I'm pretty sure Aqua probably doesn't even want to talk about it. Okay, yeah, there's one of the bell gates. Secret report. All right. I'll probably just look at all of those in a row at the end. It might be a little bit of an information dump, but it beats uh, someone watching this looking for the secret report having to skip around. All right, here goes bell gate two. Difficulty 2. So, <clears throat> hopefully it should be pretty simple. I'm only like level 40, but I don't think I should need to be that much higher for just some battle gates, right? I had a little bit of difficulty, but I'm leveling up every time I do it. So, there's secret report 2. Now I can get out of Olympus. Oh, just a bunch of nobodies. Shouldn't be that bad. The shooter ones might be a little bit annoying, though. What? Wow, is that all? Oh, nope. Oh, I haven't seen one of these guys in ages. Were they even in this game up until this fight? I fought them all the time in Castle Oblivion. Or, not Castle Oblivion, uh, the world that never was. I haven't seen them since Kingdom Hearts 2, I think, though. Now is the time to use the Rage form. Because I just teleport after him with high physical damage. Evanescent Crystal. Mega Elixir? Never gonna use that. Come on, fellas! Battlegate 5. Honestly, I'm not sure how many there are. I think it was like 14 or something. Of course, I only figured out I could jump in one at the end of the fight, so not as useful as you would hope. But hey, it's over and done with. <laughs> Selfie posed unlocked. Yes. Finally, now I can take proper selfies. What's the palm of your hand one? Is that like, it's either going to be a talk to the hand thing or a Look, I'm holding up this thing in the background. I'm going to guess probably the latter knowing Sora. Come on, fellas. Yep. Oh, look, I'm holding this up. Look, it's so heavy. Man, it feels like Sora is kind of missing the point here. It's not more than 10 years without a friend. It's more than 10 years without anyone. No one. 
She talked to Ansem like once on year ten and a half. And Mickey like once on year ten and a half. Like, <laughs> it's more than just not having a friend. It's total desolation. Good thing we don't need Rapunzel to get across any gaps now, huh? Yeah. There it is. Just had to get to a high point. Okay, that's that down. If that was the first one, I'd dread to think what the second one. A miraculous crystal formed of unspeakable thoughts. I love the item descriptions in these. It's always so fun. Glad I'm not including most of the battles or this would have to be a two-parter. Wait, this one's easier than the last? I mean, I'm not gonna complain. Okay, yep, there's 14... Okay, yep, I just confirmed it. There's 14 battle gates. Okay, halfway there. Here it is. Oh, awesome, it's a demon tower. I can actually take a picture of this stupid thing now. Yay. Wow, that was ridiculously easy. I like it. I like things being easy. There we are. Jeez, took long enough to find this. <laughs> wow. Wow, why can't I have this guy instead of, like, Goofy or Donald? Look at all this. That was just mean. I feel kind of bad for that one. And another Evanescent Crystal. And Secret Report 9. Is this a cave? This looks much more like a cave than the last thing I thought was a cave did. Oh, this is where I found my ship. Okay. Yeah, last thing I wanted was to swim through all that again, for sure. Four more. Shotlock is a lot stronger... Yoink. What's yoink? Shotlock is a lot stronger than I originally gave it credit for. Well, I accidentally stumbled across at least one of them. Twelve. Okay, so I'm doing this mildly out of order, but whatever. Not like the order of the ballot gates matters so much as the order of reading all the crap off. I do kind of dislike how they balanced the magic around the shot lock. Like, I feel like you can't use magic as much just because you have the shot lock. That's the edge of the city. Don't go any farther. But what's past the edge of the city? Like, is it just this city flowing in space, or is it actually, like, a whole world based on this Like, that always confused me about Kingdom Hearts. I'm gonna keep saying that, but... Ugh. I mean, I know the Destiny Islands had, like, a mainland. But it always feels like these worlds are defined by, uh... That's, uh, two more battle zones left to go, both in the Keyblade Graveyard. Let's do 13 first. I think I can handle 13. That was the second to last battle gate. The last one is supposed to be a doozy of a secret boss, so I'm going to go to the final world to prepare. Alright, it kicked me out of gathering phantoms, so I'm going to assume that's all the bonus I can get. 
I got two HP upgrades. Hopefully they'll help. Let's take on the secret boss, which will be the last fight. We're going to die. This is definitely in a big open place. Sora must face this challenge alone. Zeta Flare isn't going to save me this time. Oh, is that it? It's just an invisible. He hits hard though, I'll give him that. I was out of items? Didn't I have like eight high potions? Because if I take the whole thing, my uh, combo protection will save me. But if I aerial guard, it's no longer his combo. And I'm vulnerable again all of a sudden. What? He comboed out of that. Okay. I still didn't have MP. Okay. No summons. So can you, can you not aerial recovery while you're uh, in the item menu? Because I feel like that's the case. That elixir was in the air. Are you kidding me? Oh, you son of a bitch! What am I supposed to do there? I get caught in the combo once and I'm just dead. I can't outlast the combo because you just zip right back in. I don't have any magic so I can't heal so I have to use an item but it takes too long. What am I supposed to do there, huh? I guarded. I hit guard and it still hit me. Don't strike I waste in defense. I didn't. His last form is just bullshit. What? I didn't have a Koopo coin? When did I lose that? Because of the dumbass menu. Really? What the fuck? Fuck! Because of the dumbass menu- Okay. Okay, I need to put this on a hotkey. Because due to the menu bullshit... Due to the menu bullshit, I can't even, uh... Use an air dodge after using an elixir. Which is absolutely idiotic. Like, positively stupid. Is he immune to magic now? He wasn't taking any damage. No way. I keep Ariel recovering by habit instead of just letting him hit me. I want to fight him. I don't want to get comboed. But no, you have to get comboed or else you die. You have to let yourself just sit there and take it. <laughs> it's super frustrating. I don't want to just sit there and take it. I want to fight. Really? I stalled that. Back at you. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Ha -ha. 
Stop super armoring through my shit. Okay, but I blocked that. The game apparently disagrees, though. Here we go. Later. Yeah. Back off. Yeah. Back at you. Over here. Wow, that was actually a pretty sick combo. Nope, those don't have enough of a delay to uh, count for my combo thing. Okay, it's the home stretch. I just have to play this careful. He's invincible. Like, he's invincible when he does that. Home stretch, I just have to play my cards right. Oh my god, I did it. I I just played the end super slow and super careful and it paid off. Oh thank god. Whew. I think that was five I think that was six, seven attempts. It wasn't that much of a pushover for sure. I'm glad I got that extra HP.
tedious as collecting those spirits was. Oh yeah, new selfie pose. Thank you. Whew. Okay. I am done with all those stupid battle gates. Now let's see what we've gotten. What is with the all these Ansem reports? There's only 13 of them? That's odd, I thought there'd be 14. But... Says I got all I need. Recollections. Am I alive? I woke in a cell, alone until the researchers came with their tests and their prodding to uncover my identity. I had to answer I had no answer to offer them. Four friends and a key. That is the sum total of my memory. I could not even recall my name. I was simply called X there. My only solace was the time I spent talking with the two boys who would visit from time to time. Oh, this is about that girl that uh Lee and Isa were talking about. One day a man came to take me from the prison. I could not see him for, for the darkness save that he wore an eye patch. Even now, years on, I feel no closer to understanding who or what I am. May my heart be my guiding key. Okay, so likely someone from the Keyblade War who, some, who somehow lost their memories. Going by that phrase. Mark of Master Journal. Some days have passed since I set off on my journey to prepare for the Mark of Master examination. Arrakis asked for leave to undertake the same pilgrimage, but apparently I am to be the first to tour the worlds written off in the old fairy tales. Until a few short years ago, I had known only by my I'd known only my own world, a speck of land surrounded by sea. But how I dreamed of, yearned for the world beyond, and granted guidance guidance for the future, I left that nest behind. As I traded the path to my master's side, I came in contact with darkness in many forms. I knew even then, as by instinct, terrifying as its power was, it could be harnessed, mastered. Arrakis is a blue blood, descended from the very first masters in the age of fairy tales, but I did not come this far to indulge in adulation. I will be his peer, his equal, and to do that I must learn to wield the power born from both darkness and light in proper balance. Xehanort. Experiments of the Heart. Notes on Subject X. Excerpt 1. Subject was found in the central square shortly after dawn. Female, approximately 15 years old. After seven days' observation, she spoke her first words, but could not provide a name. Seven days. Subject exhibits signs of profound amnesia and it... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Subject exhibits signs of profound, profound amnesia and displays concern about which world this is. Her words suggest that she departed her homeworld with others, though she cannot recall the names of her erstwhile companions. All efforts to explore those memories have met with a rejection response. After his initial experiments on me, Ansem the Wise ceased his research into the heart. His hand stayed by some fear I cannot fathom. Yet this new subject is like me, devoid of memories. She is, the perfect she is the perfect sample upon which to continue my master's work. She, too, could benefit from it. By traversing the heart, we have the direct path into memory. I myself have begun to reclaim my lost past thanks to these very experiments. Who is she? Whence has she came? Wh Whence has she come? These are questions no scientist could ignore. And the words she muttered, may your heart be your guiding key. Xehanort. I'm sorry I'm stumbling over my words so much. Notes on Subject X, Excerpt 2. Subject's memories have not returned, and our conversations remain less than lucid. What fragments can be gleaned evoke a bygone world like one out of fairy tales? As improbable as it seems, the question may not be where she has come from, but when. If she truly has crossed through time, the prospect of probing her heart is all the more compelling. My pilot studies used a handful of subjects, but none possessed the fortitude to endure them. Ultimately, all suffered mental collapse. I knew it would be a heavy blow to lose a subject as unique as she. Upon discovering the tests I've been, con I've been conducting, my master demanded that I cease my work immediately and destroy what research I, had I have compiled. Worse still, he ordered the release of my re remaining subjects. She is gone. 
We're a subject X now. Has wise Manster Ansem hidden her away? Whatever the case, I will not be deterred. I will take her place as the first subject in the grand experiment to come. Mem whoop. Memoirs, Excerpt 1. That castle was a wonderland to us children. Within its walls, Ansem the Wise conducted his research, and the fruits it bore allowed anyone, everyone outside to live in peace and happiness. That alone was enough to stoke our interest. Though not all of the rumors that escaped his walls were so benevolent. By night, the muffled sounds of human wails emerged. There was talk of dangerous human experimentation. Lee and I couldn't help but hatch a plot to steal inside and sate our curiosity. The two who stood guard at the gates were researchers themselves, though you wouldn't think it to see them, massive and barrel-chested as they were. And slipping past that duo was only the first hurdle. It proved one not easily cleared. We were found and tossed out on our ears, time and again. On the day we finally secured our entry, we descended the long spiral stair at the heart of the castle to find a dark space below it, lined with cages. There wasn't light enough to see if they were inhabited, and we were in no position to call out to any occupants within. Yet we could feel it, a definite presence, there in the black. Terror washed over us, and we immediately regretted coming. But just as we turned to flee, we heard the faintest of voices. The urge to run was nigh overpowering, but someone or something beckoned us on. There, framed by a tenuous sliver of light, we found her. Okay, this is interesting. I've been wanting to learn more about this girl. <clears throat> Seems like she really is from, uh... That previous game. Or, uh, Union X. I'm wondering if she might be that, uh, brown-haired girl that, uh... Accompanies the... Protagonist around. I think her name was Scald, actually. It was too dim to make out her features. We spoke to her in hushed whispers. Who was she? Why was she imprisoned here? She had no answers for us. Had no memories at all. She was an enigma, but I knew I wanted to help her. And so we continued our infiltrations. Most of them stopped short at the castle gates. When we did manage our way inside, we spoke with her. That was all the comfort two children like us could offer. But Lee had other ideas. He was determined to free her. We slipped into the castle that day knowing only that we wanted, with all our hearts, to save her. But we did not find her inside on that day or the next, or any of our subsequent visits. Had she been moved? Had we simply imagined her? Lee and I knew there was only one way to be certain. And so we stand before the castle gates today, not as trespassing children, but in order to become Ansem the Wise's newest apprentices. On the replica program and reanimation, following my erasure and recompletion as a human, I did not awaken right away. Perhaps the damage was exceptionally grave. Even after waking, I remained in bed, pondering my next course of action. In my work on the replica program for the organization, I, produ I produced some 20 vessels. Most of the early results were failures, not one of them granted a number. The first success to emerge from that early lot was the Riku replica. Subsequently, Xion, number I, oh hey, that's canon, was essentially indistinguishable from a natural human, though she became unstable due to the influence of others. Using those two as my foundation, I worked to construct a number of nigh-perfect replicas, but just as they neared completion, my efforts were cut short. I suspect Xehanort aims to use both the initial lot as well as the unused replicas from my latter work. I rose today and decided to walk out to the square, my first outing in some time. Yet my stroll was interrupted when a surprising visitor appeared with an unexpected offer. Though younger than me, he had risen to become Xemnas' right hand. I accepted his terms and became a nobody once more, easier to gain access to the old replica program that way. Whatever it takes to atone. Sorry, my voice is... Ugh. Sorry, my voice is becoming a little bit shaky here. Xehanort seeks to gather twelve vessels, which, together with his true, actual self, he considers the real Organization 13. Now that he has the numbers he needs, Demix and I are being treated as reserves. Several others who served Xemnas in the old organization have followed the same course as mine, electing to abandon their newly restored humanity and rejoin the real organization as nobodies. But not Xemnas. 
Xemnas cannot exist in the present because there is Arya Zaynar here, the old man in charge. The old man's humanity prevents his heartless and nobody, others vanquished in the past, and his younger self from being denizens of this time. To circumvent this, Xehanar is using the prototype re replicas I created in the past as containers, plucking his other selves' hearts from the time they existed. Xehanar ordered me to refine the prototypes to make them closer still to the real thing. Perfecting my creation so they may house true, flesh and blood human suits my purposes as well. All that remains for my atonement is to devise a way to pass on as many of the vessels as I can to those who truly deserve them. And some code conspectus, excerpt one. I believe this is uh, Ianzo probably. I have poured over the data my master entrusted to Riku. Here I offer my preliminary conclusions. Within Sora's heart are three compartmentalized boxes, each containing the heart of another. One box holds Roxas, another holds a second heart that has been with Sora nearly as long. A third has held its heart for much longer. These hearts have melded with Sora's and no longer have voices of their own. Any attempts to mechanically extract them could prove as dire for Sora as what caused him to become a heartless in the first place. First, a vessel for each heart must be ready. Then, a spark of some sort is required to induce its waking. Obviously, the ideal solution is to restore each heart to its own body, but, whatever the case for the two unknown individuals, Roxas possesses no such thing. The same is true for Naminé, who we believe resides in Kairi's heart. Still, if alternate bodies can be secured for them, all their hearts require to be awakened is that spark. People they cared for and who cared for them, who can show them the way home. Complete and perfect digitalization of the heart is impossible. We can only hope to partially reconstruct it. Thus, I see no way forward but to extract the heart we so desperately need directly from within Sora. Fortunately, the data stored in Twilight Town contains a near-perfect record of the memories of those who lived there, and for Roxas and Naminé especially, this is crucial. As for how to contain their hearts, the only conceivable option is the replicas. If we transfer in the digital memories from the Twilight Town archive, the replicas should be able to reconstruct each individual's human appearance with near-perfect results. Then, their hearts need only the right spark to awake them, so that they may find their way out of Sora and Kairi and into these newly made bodies. The replica program was truly revolutionary, but it was incomplete at the time of the old organization's dissolution. Without Evan, how are we supposed? How are we to further the research? We need at least three three replicas. One for Roxas, one for Naminé, and one for the unknown stowaway within Sora's heart. These are difficult quandaries, but as I work through my master's data, I find myself remembering the taste of ice cream. When I was a boy, he would bring me some when we took walks together. There will be time to regret my betrayal later. For now, my focus must be on restoring Roxas and Naminé, and proving my master had good intentions. That's kind of an odd non sequitur. Okay, this is from uh, Union X, it looks like. I have seen it through. The Keyblade War unfolded exactly as written on the lost page. Now the Keyblade the Master tr entrusted to me must be bequeathed to another. Five Union leaders have been chosen from the surviving Dandelions. I will pass the Keyblade to one of them. And then continue watching the future unfold. <clears throat> Yet it seems someone has pulled the old switcheroo. One of the five is an imposter, someone the Master did not choose. They represent a virus in the program he so carefully wrote. I think this is uh, Zigbar, so I'm trying to do the voice. The virus has been a strange undertaking, a reckless plot to allow the five to escape into another world line. Surely, surely such a thing can't be possible. We're talking about the same trick that allowed the Dandelions to transfer to other world lines after the Keyblade War. But these children are no masters. They have the means. Unless, of course, a certain lady of magic summoned here from the future knows more than I do. The whole union leader thing was supposed to be by the books. Are these new events just another phase in the master's grand plan? Even on a world line with no Keyblade War, peace is but a dream. 
In the absence of us and our master, a darkness arrived, one that shall, one that shall, sur ugh, one that shall surely lead the world to a yet another demise. Amid the chaos, I bequeathed my keyblade to one of the Union leaders, just as the master instructed. I watched as the five were sent to another world line, at no small cost, ensuring the line of keyblade wielders will live on. And now, keybladeless, I must depart this land to fulfill my final task. This means casting my own body aside and sojourning my heart in vessel after vessel, as many as it takes. But I will continue gazing upon each era, one on to the next. In time, be it years or decades, centuries or, mille or millennia, I will meet the five once more. Somewhere in this cyclical history of bequeathings, a chosen one will appear and reenact the Keyblade War. When this scapegoat arrives and takes my Keyblade in hand, that will be the time to take the stage and finish my role. <laughs> so Xehanort was the chosen one, apparently, as far as this plan goes. It seems this, bo it seems this body, this name, will be my last. The lives I have lived over the ages could fill volumes, but for now I must focus on what matters most. The Keyblade has been successfully passed down, generation to generation. It seems a Keyblade Master devoted to the darkness may finally arise. Until now, I have watched over the course of events from a distance. Perhaps the time has come to intervene. I need only play the role of a fool, desirous of the Keyblade's power. I will don the mask of his ally in order to keep watch over my Keyblade from close by. The Gazing Eye, a Keyblade forged from the eye of the Master of Masters. He passed it to me as I have to others, and through it he can see the future, all that will ever come to pass. Spanning the ages in body after body, life after life, my task has been to keep vigil over the eyes it passes from hand to hand. It has been a long time. Longer than I can express. But now at last the Keyblade War has begun, and Kingdom Hearts will open. A true and complete Kingdom Hearts, born from the clash between darkness and light. I will soon be reunited with my old companions, and in that moment, my li and in that moment, my long vigil will reach its end. He will return. Unknown. Okay, well, that's about it. <laughs> A bunch of info dump stuff at the end there, and I started losing my voice, but we got it all done. Uh, that'll do it for Kingdom Hearts 3 for now. Next episode uh, will be. Next episode should be the final confrontation with Master Xehanort, which I already completed myself, but, you know, I kind of had to go back to do this. Anyway, I'll see you next time when I don't remember a single thing from any of this. Goodbye.